All right, so today we're gonna be taking a look at the Ugreen NAS, the DH4300 Plus. If you use four 30 terabyte drives, you have up to 120 terabytes max. This uses the eight core ARM processor, the Rockchip RK3588. You get 2.5 gigabit ethernet, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it comes with 32 gigabytes of eMMC. So the operating system can run on that instead of taking up space on your internal hard drives. You get three 3.2 gen USB ports. One is USB-C and the other two are USB-A. You also have the option of using 4K60 output if you wanna play videos directly from this. It does support RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, and 10 and JBOD. And I think one of the coolest things about this is it only consumes about 23 watts and a little over seven watts on standby. As of right now, they're running a Black Friday sale and you'll see it on sale for $339. So although this is feature packed, this is one of their entry level NAS devices. A lot of my audience are comprised of home theater enthusiasts. And what I wanted to know is whether this could be used as a media server. So this definitely can serve out files if you don't have to transcode them. If you do, that requires hardware transcoding, requires a more powerful processor. And this is not as powerful as some of their more advanced NAS devices, like their DXP4800 Plus that I previously reviewed that uses an Intel processor. Unfortunately, Plex does not support the Rock chip RK3588, which this uses. But what I did find surprising was that Jellyfin, which is very similar to Plex in many ways, does support this on a hardware level. So they make it very easy for you to install the things that you need. First is Docker, and then you have the option to download Jellyfin directly from this. If you follow those instructions, it's pretty straightforward and it's good to go. It's not as easy to set up as Plex, but that's not what this video is about. So the question was, does this work? And the answer is yes. I was able to transcode 4K60 video to my mobile phone, iPad, tablet, etc. Now, keep in mind, it was not as quick as the Intel-based DXP4800 Plus that I previously reviewed. That one I could change from direct stream to transcode, and it was nearly instantaneous. This one can do that, but it does take a second for it to start transcoding. But after that, it seems to work flawlessly. I've even tried doing up to three transcodes at the same time, and that even seemed to work. So I was surprised about that. For full disclosure, this is a sponsored video from Ugreen. They did send these products free for the purpose of this review. They also sent out four of these four terabyte hard drives for me to test out, but I'm able to say whatever I want about this product, good or bad. So the setup process on this was pretty straightforward. I was able to install the hard drives. They give you the screws and the little tiny screwdriver to install this stuff. I also tried it with 2.5 inch hard drives and they give you the screws for those as well. With some of their higher end ones, they do offer toolless drives, which means that you don't have to use any screws. That's kind of handy, but this is not too bad either. So as far as hard drives, SSDs, you can use any brand. You're not locked into any one particular brand. So that I do like. So the hardware installation is pretty straightforward. This is not upgradable when it comes to the RAM or installing SSDs like their other ones. To install their app, all I had to do was tap with my phone. As long as your phone has NFC, it connects, automatically starts downloading the app. So that's pretty cool. The actual software installation is very straightforward as well. You just install this, it guides you through a wizard step-by-step -step and lets you know what you need to do. Now, the main experiment was to use this as a media server for Jellyfin specifically, because I saw that it did have support. But what was interesting is that their own built-in theater app actually works pretty well just out of the box. So if you're not looking to stream your videos offsite, if it's all going to be within your local home network, then their home theater app actually works pretty well. You can install it on Apple TV, Android, you can access it on your computer via a website, and it actually was able to do 4K60 HDR, it was able to detect Atmos and Dolby Vision and able to play those on my devices. So direct stream played perfectly as you would expect, but also they do give a few options for transcoding from 4K to 1080 to 720 and so forth. And that was actually even faster than Jellyfin because I guess they were able to optimize it for their particular software. And so that was surprising. That actually worked out of the box. So if you want it very simple, you can use their theater app, load all of your movies onto the NAS. You point the theater app to that folder. It'll show ratings. It'll show reviews. It'll show the cast all laid out very nicely. So sometimes we might go out and record some videos from my kid's soccer games or her practices, things like that. And normally I would have to cast that 
to a device. Now, the problem is I use an Android phone and if I wanna cast something from Google to the Apple TV, there's no real easy way to do that. So with this though, as soon as I get home, all of my videos also get synced to the NAS and then I can just open the app on the Apple TV and start playing it at full resolution. Absolutely no loss in quality. There's no skipping or stuttering. It just plays nice and smooth and it's a seamless experience. So something else to consider. This can also do the same thing for your photos as well. And what I did was I actually had it set up on my phone. All you have to do is install the Ugreen app and set it to automatically back up when you're on Wi-Fi. And I'll go out, take some pictures, take some videos. And when I get home, it automatically syncs all of my stuff to the Ugreen. And that works perfectly. It works flawlessly and seamlessly in the background. And the actual interface for the photos is very familiar if you've ever used something like Google Photos. You can also install plugins for AI enabled search and that actually works to detect faces just like it did on my review of their DXP 4800 plus. It can also search within videos for faces. So it's pretty advanced AI search. Now I know on their website, they kind of pitched that you don't need to pay for Google Photos and cloud services if you use this. And that could be true. In my case, I've just used Google Photos for the longest time. I don't find it overly expensive. So I do still pay for Google Photos even though I have this NAS. But I think I would approach it from a slightly different angle from how Ugreen would say it. And I would say, hey, this is kind of cool just to have a local backup. Because if you're backing up to Google Photos, that's on the cloud and that requires you to have an internet connection. If you don't have a connection to the internet, then all you have access are your local files that are on your phone. And I'm pretty sure that your photos from 10 years ago are no longer on your phone. Whereas with this, as long as you can access your local network, you can have access to all the files locally, which I like to have two copies, one that's on the cloud, one that's local just for security purposes, I guess you can say. As far as the UI and user experience, it's actually very easy to set up. So I haven't reviewed all types of NAS devices, so I don't know what the others are like. But from my experience as a beginner, this was pretty straightforward and I thought that it was pretty polished. And overall, even though I'm still pretty new to NAS devices, the software gives me the confidence that I know what I'm actually doing. Some of the stuff with the virtualization and Docker, that can get a little bit more complicated, but it's doable. And I like that I'm able to do this. Now, who would I recommend this device for? Well, I mean, it has more than Apple storage. If you're using this as a file server, something to back up your photos, more basic stuff. You can still use it as a media server, as I explained earlier, but I would say if this is gonna be your primary device as a media server and you want it to do transcoding, I would say you may wanna look at some of their higher end models. That hardware transcoding does take a lot of processing power and it's just, more seamless and it's quicker to use if you use a more powerful device. Fortunately, Ugreen offers both solutions. You can figure out which one works for you. So that is it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos and watch these other videos that are similar. You can check the links in the description to get 20% off until December 1st.